I think this video is super interesting because it shows the evolution of targeting from pretty much step one all the way through some pretty advanced stuff. This is Nina. She is a Section A Welsh Pony and she's six years old. And we're teaching her to follow a target stick. And th this is the very first time we've introduced the target stick. So um, it's actually just a little riding crop and I'm holding it in front of her. And one of the reasons that I chose to make the riding crop the target stick is that Nina is actually pretty afraid of whips, um, which might just be something innate and it might have something to do with past training experiences. But by turning the whip into a target, we um, not only reduce that association so she can be around whips without having a negative reaction, and um, the whip is just an easy length to use for a target stick for the size of pony. So already Nina is walking, uh, following the target stick well enough that she'll break into a trot beside me, which is just awesome because every time your horse offers that little bit of energy, they're training themselves to be able to use their energy without getting on adrenaline. So the more often you practice sort of difficult things like this that um, could be somewhat stressful for the horse, but presented in a way where it's totally their idea, you'll um, start to teach them that energy does not necessarily correlate with adrenaline. So here I'm beginning to ask for some flexion from Nina because it's common for young horses to um, become stiff when they flex and a little bit irritable. But uh, as Nina is following the target stick, she's learning to flex and carry a bend through her whole body. And eventually what I'm going to use this for is a one rain stop, but there won't be a rain involved. It'll just be Nina following the target stick. So she's walking out pretty good and here I'm trying to get her to trot on a circle. This is an alternative to lunging. You just uh, lead the stick out, and instead of teaching the horse to run away from pressure, you teach him to follow the target stick, and then blend in the movement of your rear hand, in this case my right hand, um, you blend in the movement of that as a cue to go forward. So it's not something that they're running away from, it's something that they just understand as a mere cue. So um, I'm clucking to Nina a little bit now, and I didn't start clucking for her to trot until she was offering the trot. So I'm letting her build this association between the clucking and the trotting on her own. So she's getting pretty good at turns, but she has a really hard time doing more than half a circle, which is really common. So um, I don't force the lunging, I just move on to something else. Because a half a half turn actually um, is a good way to get a nice stop out of her while riding. So I put reins on her, but I don't use the reins at all. Um, in fact, I probably could have done this without her wearing any reins or even a halter. Um, but they were there, so we just put them on in case I needed them. So uh, this is less using the target stick and um, we're using the target stick to get Nina to walk forward so I'm not using any leg cues or voice cues. So Nina is just following the stick because she wants to. And what's really great about this is that a lot of horses are a little bit afraid to walk carrying a rider. Um, and they can want to scoot out from under you or um, some just refuse to move and then blow if you touch them with your legs. And in this case Nina doesn't have to follow the target if she doesn't want to. It's totally elective. So here we're working on her right eye, which is a little bit harder for her. And um, she chooses, instead of making a nice tight turn around to the target, to go the long way around. But what I really like about that is actually she makes the decision to make the wide turn to keep herself within her own comfort level. And so I could have just you know, picked up on my rein and made her make a nice sharp turn, but what would have been the point in that? Instead, what she said is, here, let's compromise. I'll still make the turn, but let me make it from a position I'm comfortable with. And that's great, because I'd much rather have her make a decision like that than just go, oh, well, this is just plain too scary, I'm sick of you pushing me around, and then blow up on me. So Nina did so well at following the target with less that now I'm holding the target on my own and I'm actually riding Nina all over the arena just with the target stick. 
So, um, we, I wish that we had filmed a little bit longer. Like, this video doesn't really show all that we accomplished in this one day. And this is in just a little over, a little under real time. Like, Nina has only been following the target stick for a matter of minutes now. And I'm already riding her with it. And she's a very green pony. So, um, I'm holding the target stick out. And here you see me trying it on the right eye for the first time. And I really like how she thinks about how to move over toward it. Like, at first she had a little bit of an opposition reflex. But instead of just continuing to have that reflex, she decided to work through it and try and turn her head and actually was completely successful. So we keep riding like this a little bit more and about three minutes after this, I'm able to ride her over all the obstacles in the arena, including over jumps and bridges, and get her to stop just by holding the riding crop under her nose. So when she targets and has to bend her neck towards the chest to target, she stops. And I can even back her up with it a little bit. So I'm really pleased with Nina's success with this, um, especially for this being her first day of targeting ever. And we're going to keep using this target like this to build her confidence with riding. And I anticipate that it's going to be something that she enjoys and is really good for her self-esteem.